Just a few announcements before the homily. First, I want to welcome uh, those uh, who are joining us for this, uh, for this Mass today, especially if there's some maybe who are coming for their first time or who are coming um, every once in a while. It's great to have you. The, what we, why many of us come to this Mass, the traditional Latin Mass, is, uh, is because we love it, right? Uh, we, we love it. We find here that during this Mass, um, the way that it's prayed, that there's a great power here. Mainly, uh, some of the things that we notice and love are the reverence in the Mass, right? The attention to detail, how everything is done with uh, great attention and reverence for God. We love uh, the silence in the Mass, right? We love in this Mass that there's many veils, there's many layers, many. And, and, uh, and these layers each are, are kind of... Um, each in their own way reveals something of the mystery of God. Um, in, in this Mass, you'll notice the chalice is, is, is always veiled. The priest, of course, is, is veiled like with the, um, with the vestments. The ciboria is veiled. We see many that there's many layers. Even the language is kind of veiled. There's like a veil that it's done in Latin and not just in the English that we would easily understand. It makes it harder, absolutely, right? And that's why for many people find that um, we have to keep coming back before we can kind of get our bearings and grounding so that we can really, really appreciate and dig into the deep mysteries and, and, and the beauty of, 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 this, of, of this mass. Um, but those layers, they, they, uh, they help us to enter more deeply into the mystery of God. And so, uh, yeah, for all those who are joining us, you're most welcome. And, and I hope that uh, as you're praying the Mass, that you're not turned off by... Uh, it's foreign, it's difficult, it's, it's, it's strange in some ways. But rather, all of those are directed to help us to enter more deeply into the mystery of God. And there's a reason for everything. There's nothing here that doesn't have an important meaning. Also, I encourage you to take a copy of the bulletin home with you. In the bulletin, you'll notice our schedule for, for this week, for Christmas, uh, for the Nativity of our Lord, for uh, all the things going forward. Um, uh, for, for Christmas, we will have, I'm really excited, it's the first time that I'll ever get to do uh, the, the traditional Mass for Midnight Mass. So we're having that uh, at midnight uh, on Christmas Eve at our parish here. I hope that you'll be able to come and join us. Um, be just before the Midnight Mass, we will have, again, a first time ever doing this, we will have a matins, which is uh, like the, uh, the divine office or the liturgy of the hours that often priests or, or religious would say, and lay people can too. Um, we will have it in the older form at, at 11 p.m. and it will be sung. So if you'd like to come and join us, you can even come earlier at 11 and begin those, those, those prayers just before uh, the midnight mass. The, uh, and, and, and then uh, we will prepare for the mass. Um, Adam, uh, our, our lead uh, for the choir, uh, for our school, uh, after this Mass, is going to offer just a bit of an overview, especially if any of you are interested or haven't experienced it before, would like to know a little bit more what to expect come Christmas Eve, uh, just maybe come to the front of the church, and we have the booklets, and he'll just, uh, have, you'll have a chance to go through it with him, uh, maybe so that we can benefit even more from it. Another announcement. Um, uh, two, uh, two other things. One is... Uh, for the Feast of Epiphany, there is a tradition of, of, of priests going around to bless people's homes at the time of Epiphany. So uh, I intend to do that with the Blessed Epiphany water and with the chalk to write over your door the names of the three kings. Um, for that special blessing, if you would like to sign up, please just go to our website and there's a link there on the homepage to leave your name and everything and then I'll set it up with you. I'm trying, I would love to get to everyone's home in our parish during the first part of the new year at Epiphany in order to give this, this special house blessing. Also, uh, we need to have a Christmas party. Uh, we're, we're Christians, right? And we're celebrating with our families and all of that, but also we want to celebrate as a church community too. And so uh, we do with the Mass, most especially, of course, but, but also just to celebrate outside of that, right, with, with our, our, our Christian community. And so uh, I'm planning to have a Christmas party on January the 5th, uh, which is a Sunday, and the idea would be after this Mass, we would go over to the school gym and, uh, and have like a potluck kind of Christmas party. I hope that we can have games, that we can sing some Christmas carols and songs, that we can have just a really good time and a chance as well just to build our friendships, which is a really important thing 
our friendships with, with each other and to meet some new people um, who maybe we haven't met yet. I'm always amazed, right, I, as I get to know more and more of you, just how, uh, how we're so lucky to have great people, right, with, with awesome experiences, with real faith, and it's just sometimes building those friendships, having an opportunity to get to meet each other. So please uh, make those plans to be able to come. De- the details are in the bulletin for our Christmas party. If you're willing to help set up, take down, um, with uh, uh, volunteering for games for kids, or, for, or if you have your own idea of what would be really awesome and fun to do at our Christmas party, there's a sign-up sheet just after the last pew on your left. Just put your name there, and I will get in touch with you. And then lastly, uh, we normally have confessions before the Mass. There's a number of people who I didn't get to today. If you just give me a few moments after the Mass, I'll go back into the confessional, and, uh, and as long as we need, I will be here. From the prophet Isaiah, Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today in the readings, we hear these words from Isaiah. Every hill shall be brought down and made low, every valley shall be raised up, and all shall see the salvation of God. As I was reflecting on that reading, uh, something that came to mind was an experience that I had this past summer. This past summer, I had the chance to bike with some friends west. And uh, we went all through northern Ontario, and for many of you that you've been through there, you'll remember how there's rocks, big rocks, and kind of hilly area, how there's lots of forest and trees. You can go, you can go for a long time without seeing anyone or anything. Uh, but as we kept going and going, what happened was basically my recollection, it might not be true, but my recollection was that basically all of a sudden, as soon as we hit Manitoba, boom, just like completely flat that you can see forever, right? It was so, so different, such a contrast. And uh, this reading that we hear, this prophecy of Isaiah, is, I, I, I think is kind of like that experience, at least for me, and maybe many of you can identify with it as well, that uh, when there's hills, when there's valleys, when there's, um, uh, there's things that obstruct our view, we can only see like a very limited, our, our sight is very limited. But uh, when things are flattened and made straight, then all of a sudden, look out. Like, we can see all the way to the end. Um, For us, in terms of our faith, it's a great analogy, a great image, that we 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 want to lower our pride, right? We want God to knock down these mountains, these hills that get in the way of our vision and our sight so that we can't see heaven. We want God to lower our our sinfulness, to lower our weaknesses, to bring all of that down, to really humble us. But that's not all, of course. Then we also want him to raise up, to raise up virtue inside of us, to raise up our goodness, our sanctity, and our holiness, so that that pathway is actually made into a highway, not just a, a walkway or a little path, but a highway, so we can not only see heaven in, in the distance, but also that we have a clear path. We can see where, where, we, where we must walk, and even we can run because it's a highway. We can drive fast. You can hop in your car. And that in this way, we can get to God very, very quickly. For us, St. John is that one, that prophet, who's calling us back, using these words of Isaiah, to, to seek the Lord, to get rid of those obstacles, to lower them with our humility, and to raise up to raise our game to a new level. He encourages us in the gospel to put our sin behind us. He comes for a baptism, for repentance, for the remission of sins. And so often it's sin that builds up. It's sin that obstructs our view. It's sin that that makes us lose our way in the mountain range. And so to lower it, to get it out and eliminate it. Um, today, I just want to reflect just very briefly on uh, just some practical things for, for confession. Not so much um, I, another homily. I would love to talk about how we can prepare for confession and that kind of thing. But more just practically here at St. Anne's, like, how, how do you go to confession here? What does it look like? Like, just very simply, like, what, what, how are we trying, to, um, how are we trying to, uh, to approach this sacrament? So first, I I don't know if you're aware, but we try to have the sacrament of confession here 
30 minutes before all of our Masses, on the weekends, during the week. Um, I try to do that because co confession is so important and it's so helpful. It's been for me and I want to offer it for you as well. Uh, if For the Latin Mass in particular, um, it's hard. Like I think we had eight or nine people left over, right, that I didn't get to. So um, it's, it's tight. Uh, after the last Mass at 10 a.m., and then me trying to get things finished off and into the confessional, it's, uh, it's, it's tight. So um, uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, when you're coming to confession, just trying to be three things, just clear, concise, and concrete, right? Not, I don't need to know about your brother's sins, your daughter's sins, your, your mom or dad's sins, or someone else. You can tell me all about their sins. That would be, actually, it's not great, right? We're not supposed to do that. Um, but just to kind of, just to be simple, and clear, what are my sins? What am I confessing? If, if I need to know more, I'll ask you, right? You don't have to give me the whole, a whole long story, especially if you're coming before the Latin Mass, just because there's many people who, who would like to cleanse and purify their soul before receiving Jesus in the Holy Communion. Um, if it turns out as today that before the Mass, I wasn't able to get to you, I'm willing to stay after. I'll hear your confession. You don't have to leave without getting your confession heard. Just if you wouldn't mind normally throughout the year, just uh, giving me a few minutes because the only time I see most of you is Sunday. A few minutes just to say hi to people if there's things that we need to talk about or someone needs to ask for prayers or for something. Just to give a little bit of an opportunity. If you're patient, I will come and, uh, and hear your confession before you leave. I'm happy to do that. Where do we go to confession here? Do you guys know? Um, it's kind of hidden. It's a little tricky, right? In that back left corner is where the confessional is hidden. It's actually the old, uh, the old baptistry. So it's not that clearly labeled. And it's a little bit hard to find. You go into that first room and then into the confessional room. We do have the traditional confessionals here, like uh, with, uh, yeah, with the priest in the middle and then on either side. But we don't have curtains yet. So I'm hoping at some point that we'll be able to get the curtains and move back over here uh, for the sacrament of confession. But we're not there yet. So practically here, when you line up for confession, we usually line up just out in front of that doorway into that first room. And then usually when someone would go in, they would close that door just to kind of to keep their privacy and that their confession will not be overheard. So you know when that door, wooden door is closed, someone's in there, when it's open, uh, that then it's free and you can come. Good. Do you want more? <laughs> um, just a little bit more. So... Um, for how to go to confession. I just wanted to mention a few things kind of from maybe a bit more from my side, but from yours too. Um, first, uh, if you notice, uh, if you're here before I get to the confession, you notice when I walk back, I try to keep my head down. And it's not, I'm not trying to be rude, um, but I'm just trying to allow for, you're supposed to have the opportunity for anonymity. So if you don't want the priest to see who you are when you come to confession, we want to respect that. So in my mind, what I'm, what, the reason I've got my head down is I don't want to see who's lined up. Just so that if they don't want me to know who they are, then I don't know who they are because I didn't look up. So that's kind of the reason, if you notice, I'm not sad or I'm not uh, uh, angry at anyone. I'm just trying to, to allow, for, allow for anonymity for those who would want it. Also, then, uh, when you come into the confessional, um, you'll notice that there's a chair there and that there's the kneeler there, uh, uh, the kneeler there as well. If you want anonymity and confession, you would use the kneeler with the screen in front of it, and, 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 that would be, uh, and that would be possible. I would ask, just me, right? You don't have to listen to me in this area if you don't want to, um, but I would ask when you're coming to confession, if you can uh, use the kneeler and the screen, I would appreciate it. You don't have to. If you don't want to, that's fine. Um, but, but I would appreciate if you did, and mainly just because it helps me a little bit just not have to think about that or worry about that. I don't worry about it, right? I'm not trying to keep list of everyone's sins or anything. But just, it's just a simple way for me of, of, of just kind of trying to enter more deeply into the prayer of confession, not worrying about who this individual person is, but just trying to listen very attentively um, to what they're saying and, uh, and, 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 and to pray for you, right? I just find it a little bit easier. Also, I would encourage you in confession to kneel, that it's, it's a good posture. It's, it's an appropriate posture in confession especially. Why? 
Because when we confess our sins, it's a prayer, right? Often when we're prayer and, 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 and worship and, and in a profound way, we kneel. We kneel during the consecration when Jesus becomes present on the altar. That when we're in confession, especially when the priest is giving the absolution, I think it's most appropriate that, that we kneel because Jesus is there. The priest is acting in the person of Christ. And it's Christ who really is speaking those words, I absolve you. It's Christ who is forgiving our sins. I encourage you uh, to kneel. And also because kneel, kneeling is a position of prayer as we approach God, and kneeling is a, it can be a penitential po- position or posture as well, right? That when we are asking for mercy, when we're begging for something, we have this tradition that we would, we would kneel, right? We're coming before God, uh, begging and asking for his mercy for our sins. When you confess, as I mentioned, and it's worth maybe mentioning again, just try to be simple, right? You don't have to make stuff up. You don't have to make, like, seem like a long story. You don't have to justify what you've done. I've done all kinds of crazy stuff, right? Like, I, I know why we do it. Like, it's just, it, it doesn't always make sense, whatever. That's not the point here, right? Um, the point is just we want to come simply, sincerely before God and just to confess our sins. And that's beautiful. For the absolution, I... Uh, especially at around the times of this Mass, I will normally try to use the older uh, form for, uh, for absolution. So there's a prayer that is basically just kind of simplified in, in the Novus Ordo, but, but I'll try to use uh, the traditional one uh, around the time of this Mass, which, which is legit, and you're forgiven, all of that. Um, someone gave me this card, which is really nice, uh, that, that I use. So if you see me with this card on my lap, or if you notice I'm holding something, it's usually just this card with the prayers. I know the prayers, but I don't want to mess them up. And, uh, and it's nice just to be able to read them as I'm praying them for you. Today, I just wanted quickly, uh, you hear these prayers uh, sometimes. Um, I just wanted to read f- for you what they are in English. It's not that long. And it's, it's, it's a really good prayer. Often, uh, as you're saying the act of contrition, you might hear me whispering. What I'm doing is I'm already just starting to say the prayer. You can say your prayer, and I can already start mine uh, and begin the prayer of, of a blessing for you and then come to the words of absolution, which you will hear. So the priest normally first says in English, May Almighty God have mercy on thee, forgive thee thy sins, and lead thee unto everlasting life. Right? He's just saying a prayer that God would have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to heaven. And then he says, uh, may the almighty and merciful Lord grant thee pardon, absolution, and remission of your sins. May God take away, right? Take away and remove the guilt of your sins. And and, and, And then the main prayer, may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve thee, and by his very authority do I absolve thee from every bond of excommunication, suspension, and interdict, in so far as lies within my power, and thou hast need of it. So here he's saying, um, just one thing to point out, it's that it's by Christ's authority, right? Not by my authority. I have no authority apart from Jesus to forgive sins. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Um, But by the power of Jesus Christ, by the authority that he gives, um, I forgive you, and it's Christ who forgives you. Furthermore, I absolve thee from thy sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then the last prayer, a prayer of blessing as you go away from confession, a prayer of strength. May the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, the merits of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and of all the saints, the good thou hast done and the ill thou hast endured, profit thee under the remission of sin, increase in grace, and reward in in eternity. So just asking the prayers of all the saints, of all the angels, of Mary, asking that whatever cross you carry, that God will bless you for it, that he will take away your sins, increase grace, and give you eternal life in heaven. St. John the Baptist, today we ask you to pray for us. You taught and preached on the need and importance of penance and of, and of, and, and, and of a true penitent heart. Help us to see in in God's mercy, not weakness, but rather renewal, strength, and growth. Help us to confess our sins. Help us to flatten the vices in our lives and to lift up virtue so that we can live on the path, on that highway, that road that leads to heaven. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.